Yeah, all right. So I thought I'd start with a little bit of advocacy because this is great timing. Uh, I haven't been in the Torres Strait for ages because of COVID and I was there last week, which was just lovely. Uh, and what, you're worried that no one can hear me? Yeah, I'm fairly big. loud. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, for the people online, you've got the speaker now. All right, so I'd start, I thought I'd start here. Um, we're all a bit kind of bored with the fact that COVID, everyone's talking about nothing but COVID. Uh, so one way to get around this, I spoke to the Taurus News last week and got uh, managed to get this um, headline, or well, not headline it, but you know, uh, TV shouldn't be forgotten the COVID era. So yes, yes, I'm very keen to talk about COVID, anything you like, anytime you like. And we spent the whole time talking about how TB was was a huge burden, particularly in Papua New Guinea, um, and and so got the got the conversation back on COVID, on TB. Sorry. So this is um, not a great photo, but just a reminder. So we've got Saibai Island of the outer islands of the Torres Strait on the right over there, and Papua New Guinea on the left. That was me um, when I was uh, on the flight in uh, last week. This time last week. So very close. You know, there's um, two three kilometres between the two and lots of, usually lots of uh, movement through the treaty process, but what you can't really make it happen, that's, that's not a dugout, it's not a banana boat, that is a, like, looks like a warship, it's a vessel, and so in fact at the moment, the, 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 what's there is the, the Australian Navy or Border Force, they take turns and they're patrolling it. So essentially the borders have been closed since about this time last year. Um, all right, so, oh, one of the lovely things about the Taurus is it's got some gorgeous islands and this was our team meeting. We worked pretty hard, but we did take a couple of, <laughs> couple of hours off and I took this photo, so I'm not in it. So I'm very pleased to, uh, that that's the case. And, and this respectable photo over there, that's, uh, that's of me at uh, Saibai Island. Um, all right, so that was on Friday Island, which is an absolutely gorgeous place. The weather was a bit squally, but you can tell it was still warm and beautiful. We had a swim, it was gorgeous. Swam with the crocs. Not quite. All right, so to, to get started, uh, what this uh, map shows is the gradient of TB notifications as you move further north in Australia. And, and it's very, very clear uh, in the places where there's very few, uh, so every, almost everyone's Australian born down in the Darling Downs and Wide Bay, as opposed to Brisbane per se, you see about one case per 100,000. And as you move up, it gets up to about 12 or 15 plus right at the top there, uh, cases per 100,000 where the um, indigenous population um, is much higher. Uh, but that doesn't tell the whole story uh, because at this point, the Cairns and Hinterland uh, and uh, also the Torres and Cape were sort of lumped in together. So I'll just show you, this is just the Torres Strait. So that was 15. So 15 per 100,000 is about here, right? Whereas if you look at the Taurus, it's up and down. Um, the numbers, which you see on the, on the left, are actually very small, but the rates, which you see on the right, are, are um, you know, depends on the year, of course, but are, are very, very high. So we've got a small population who have very high rate of TB. It's um, somewhat clustered, as you'd expect, um, and on, in some years, it's, it's very, very small indeed. In other years, we get little outbreaks. So um, now, so what's happened in the last, so I'll go back, uh, in the last year or so, we've seen almost uh, no cases. And that's, um, I think, well, almost no cases. This is in Australian residents. Uh, we've also seen almost no cases in PNG. Uh, residents, whereas in previous years, in addition to those that uh, that caseload, we see enormous numbers, or about ten times the number of, of uh, Australians we see as P we see PNG residents who who uh, have emergency um, trips to the outer islands of the Torres Strait to seek health care. Okay, so um, just very quickly in the unit um, during this kind of lull, if you like, we have. Um, brought in a few operational activities, including um, telehealth, which is up and running. And that's what we've had to do while, while COVID's been around because uh, we haven't been able to go to the Torres Strait for, for much of the second half of last year anyway. Um, video dot as well. Um, the nurses are working very hard at BCG catch up campaign. As you'll recall, there was a shortage of BCG and that affected our population very much. And we had a lot of uh, kids who were up to three, four years old when they were getting their um, their BCG. Um, 
And we've managed to, over the last couple of years, complete a few Bedaquilin based regimens and all oral uh, short course treatments for MDR. So we're very pleased to have, have achieved that. Uh, in terms of research, um, we've got, I guess, three different modes. One is implementational um, and, I guess, epidemiological descriptive. And then the second one is sort of modeling slash phylodynamics. Um, and the third is sort of some basic science. Uh, so I'll just quickly talk about each of those. So Jabelle Foster, who's the nurse director of the TB unit and PhD candidate, um, did some work looking retrospectively at people who've um, had sputum sent for uh, smear and culture from, from our unit. And um, like several other studies um, in other regions found that uh, two, two sputums um, is pretty much captures the totality of um, sputums and um, a third sputum is, is, is less, is, the yield does not substantially increase. And even for those who had two smear negatives and then a positive, many of those were uh, already going to be positive on culture. So they're not really, they were not necessarily really missed. Uh, and this is important because up in the Taurus, if someone from PNG presents for care, we only get 24 hours with them uh, at the most because they get sent back to their village. So if we can do um, a sputum straight away, then have them come back in an hour or two for a second one. Uh, if that's sufficient, uh, then that's what we should aim to do rather than um, we, we, so we can't recall people for care. Uh, so, uh, so it's good to know that that is sufficient. The other thing that we found in this study was that uh, the people from PNG were more likely to have cavities, more likely to be smear positive, and more likely to not get sufficient number of sputum collected, uh, all as a result of sort of the delay in diagnosis and the difficulty of getting to diagnosis. So, um, so there's something uh, to be further investigated in, in with that. All right, so um, the second study that Jabelle's undertaking is a um, costing study uh, and looking at the cost of a typical, managing a typical TB patient, just with drug susceptible TB coming across the border um, through the Australian healthcare system. And suffice to say, it's extremely expensive and half of that expense we're talking sort of six figures, half of that expense um, is in transport. Uh, medivacs to Cairns do not come cheaply and, and most of the remaining half is in inpatient stay. Very little of the cost is treat, drug treatment, for example, uh, but of course they, everything adds up. So that's um, under review and we hope will be published sometime this year. Uh, okay, so moving on to the more basic science side of things. We've, uh, Andreas Kups spoke at a, a, what was it called, an ACNET hot, hot housing or something, a couple of three years ago, maybe. It's, this is finally underway. So this is unraveling the correlates of TB immunity. Develop, he, as, as, um, Andreas is doing lots of work in, with the aim of developing new vaccines for tuberculosis and, and wants to look at people who are young and compare those who are unvaccinated who have TB or at least are TST positive with those who are vaccinated and look at the differences in their immune response to see what we can get out of that. Um, and so the aim is to, um, you know, because of this TB catch up, it's a BCG catch up campaign, we are finding some people who've been exposed to TB but who haven't had a BCG and to take their bloods and compare it with those who have not. So they, this is the two groups. You're either um, TST positive um, and you don't get a further vaccination or you're TST negative and you get BCG vaccinated and there are two groups who are going to um, be examined. And the good news is after years of sort of struggling with ethics and, and um, um, governance, this is finally approved in two sites, Cairns and the Torres and Cape uh, and, and is already recruiting in Cairns, which is great. Um, so I won't um, go further into that. So there are more studies planned for the next two years along with this. Um, Jabelle's uh, looking into risk factors for drug resistance, risk factors for poor outcomes and the geospatial distribution of TB in the Taurus. Um, and we, we're going to investigate through a summer student the potential impact 
of a local gene expert. We do not have a gene expert in the Taurus. Oh, that's my time, um, which is okay. Um, and if we do get a gene expert, which we will in the next year or two, um, uh, we have a couple of MRFF applications to fund sort of the um, cost analysis um, and implementation research around that. So that's me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Emma, you can stay just, just for a quick question. I think it's such a topical um, area people may have been a burning question. Anything online? That's a, uh, what. So, what has been the experience? What has been the experience with Video Dot? Ah, uh, um, so so with well, we've we've had uh, telehealth and Video Dot. Um, so because the the nurses uh, do ha so the nurses undertake Dot in throughout the Cape and Torres, which is not necessarily all of Australia wide that that happens and so they have initiated video dot with I mean it's been successful to date but is is um, small in scale because we don't have a great n number of um, of people so if people um, have TB and they're on cyber Island or Thursday Island they still get in person dot because we have staff there but if it's not if it's one of the outer islands um, we cannot we uh, some of the nurses are undertaking dot through through video, yeah, um, and it, yeah, it has been successful to date. Um, I might just to ask, this is clearly a politically sensitive and difficult issue, but we've got a, I suppose, a, a natural experiment in progress with the border having been closed now. <laughs> How would one manage this? There would obviously be lots to learn from analysing this time period, but what's your your sense of 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 um, the effect of the border closures and the possible impact on you know, future movement across um, the Torres Strait. Yeah, I can't. Uh, well, all right. So the border's closed. Uh, we're seeing very few people from PNG. I mean, not zero because it's still technically if there's a medical emergency that we, we need to welcome and assess people and potentially medevac them if necessary. Uh, but no one's coming for sort of um, things like market trade or weddings or funerals or any of those things um what i what we've seen is just a dramatic reduction in in health care workload from from the people on the australian side of the border um, and we've also seen a decline in tb over the last two years or three uh even in people who are residents with within our side of the border as well as obviously a dramatic decline in workload from people who are living on the other side so uh, I don't know what that means for the future, uh, whether that's going to make, I mean, all of Australia seems to be very keen to lock down. So why should the tourists behave any differently from, from Melbourne or Sydney, I guess? Um, yeah, I guess we'll wait and see how, how it affects things so, you know, socially, but I suspect it'll make people more uh, insular rather than less, sadly, but anyway. Okay. Thank you, Emma.